This is uh, an important uh, moment, a chance uh, to make good on the promise of 25 years ago when the Iron Curtain came down. Uh, the sacrifices that brave Ukrainians uh, uh, who are even now defending against Russian aggression uh, in the East, uh, to make good on the uh, efforts of thousands, thousands of unsung heroes, civil society activists, ordinary citizens uh, who are trying to preserve a normal life in Donbass, uh, preventing and uh, preserving their freedom uh, in cities like uh, Mariupol, uh, and of course, the promise of those long nights in the Madonna, uh, freezing and facing down sniper fire. You are a remarkable people, the Ukrainian people. You are brave people, and you have demonstrated that once again to the whole world. And through your courage uh, and your sacrifice, uh, Ukrainians have won, you've won for yourself a chance to, uh, to fundamentally, to fundamentally alter the history of uh, your country for the better, much better. So I want to urge all Ukrainians to seize this moment, take advantage of the momentum of this day, and keep building the democracy that you so desperately and richly deserve, to keep moving your country forward. Today, uh, the President and I discussed uh, uh, all the work that's ahead. We uh, spoke about the threat to Ukrainian sovereignty and territorial integrity posed by Russian aggression. It's simply unacceptable in the 21st century for countries to attempt to redraw borders by force in Europe, or anywhere for that matter, or to intervene militarily because they don't like the decision their neighbor has made. In fact, Russian behavior represents a flagrant violation of the bedrock principles of our international system, which is why the international community has responded with one voice, amplifying your voice, Mr. President, the voice of all Ukrainians, helping Ukrainians defend their sovereignty and their security, the security of your nation. The international community is condemning Russian action, expanding security assistance to Ukraine, imposing greater and greater costs on Russia for its illegal actions, and refusing, refusing to accept the so-called elections held by separatists on November the 2nd. These weren't democratic elections. They were Kremlin orchestrated farce. And let me say as clearly and categorically as I can, America does not and will not recognize Russian occupation and attempted annexation of Crimea. We do not, will not, and insist others do not accept this illegal annexation. Now, there's a different path for Russia 
in her fractions, a different path, path they can take. In fact, it's a path that uh, has already been signed on in the paper by the Minister Agreement that the President spoke of. A series of concrete commitments adhere to the ceasefire, which they are not. Restore Ukrainian control over its own border with a permanent monitoring at the border. Remove now illegal military formation, military equipment, and military, and facilitate the release of all hostages. That's what was agreed by Mr. Putin. None of that has occurred. If Russia were to fulfill these commitments and respect Ukrainian sovereignty and territory, territorial integrity, we can begin a rational discussion about sanctions. But that's not what has happened. Instead, we've seen more provocative actions, more blatant disregard for the agreement that was signed not long ago by Russia. And so long as that continues, Russia will face rising costs, greater isolation, and <laughs> it's quite straightforward and simple. There's a way to change that. Do what you agreed to do, Mr. But as President Poroshenko and I have discussed, even if the guns in the East fell silent tomorrow, Ukraine would still face a struggle for its democratic and economic future here in Kiev. There's a lot of work to do in Kiev. It begins with forming a new government. In days, not weeks, form a new government as quickly as possible. It should be done in days, not weeks. Push forward the reform agenda that has been agreed upon the Ukrainian people and the agenda that the Ukrainian people have so resoundingly endorsed. Stronger democratic institutions, a more accountable government, greater integration with Europe, more prosperous economy, and resolute efforts to root out the cancer of corruption that has hobbled Ukraine for a long time. It will face no more consequential mission than confronting corruption. President Poroshenko has shown a seriousness of purpose, and the RADA has passed important anti-corruption legislation. Now, the real challenge is seeing it through. Later today, I'll be meeting with members of the Parliament and Civil Society to talk about how we, the United States, can work with you, can work with them, and work together to maintain the momentum in this all-important fight. The President and I also discussed Ukraine's economic situation. President Poroshenko and Prime Minister Yatsenyuk have worked very hard to develop a reform program with the IMF. The President and I have met with the IMF as well regarding Ukraine. Let me assure you, as Ukraine continues on this course, international partners will step up and help, starting with the United States. We're working closely with international institutions to make sure Ukraine has the financial resources and support that it needs. And as we do, we're looking for opportunities to improve Ukraine's business climate and increase trade and investment. But it all depends on following through on the reforms which have begun. And finally, I want to make clear America's commitment to Ukraine is not just about business and government. It's personal. It's grounded in the friendship between our people. And in the next few months, American Peace Corps volunteers will be returning to Ukraine 
to continue the work we have done more for more than 20 years. Building a democracy is difficult. Building a democracy takes patience. Building a democracy requires follow-through on the rhetoric that sounds so good when it's asserted. Hard work, ironclad determination, these are what is needed. And even then, there is no absolute guarantee of success. It's hard work. What I can guarantee is that so long as, Mr. President, you and your colleagues keep faith with your commitment to build a more democratic and prosperous life, you will never be alone. The United States will be at your side, your partner, and your friend. So, Mr. President, may God bless you and your colleagues and the people of Ukraine on this important day of dignity. And may God bless the United States of America and be able to continue to help you in America. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President.